episode 42 of This Is Us 2 is brought to you by Minute with Mary. Now, you guys, the holidays are coming. The holidays pretty much are already here if you count Halloween as one of those holidays like I do. And if you want to have your makeup on point or if you just want to feel a little bit more confident during the holiday season and maybe add a new little lip to your repertoire, find me. Oh, I like that. That was good. Thank you. The whole rolling of the tongue thing. Yeah, I took Italian in college and high school. (laughs) (laughs) Just find me. Search the hashtag tag Minute with Mary or head on over to MinuteWithMary.com. You get any sleep? Not really. You? Slept like a baby because everything's going to be all right. Yeah, not if my number comes up. Lottery, I mean. It's not going to happen, Nikki. It might. It won't. I know. You got a plan. I don't. Yeah, you do. My own personal Superman. Just a big brother. And I'm your lowest lane. Always needing to be saved. You know that is not who you are, right? Okay. Hey, look, we'll we'll watch the bar tonight. I have a plan. Rhode Island, welcome to This Is Us 2. It's a podcast dedicated to This Is Us on NBC. So sit back, relax, and let's all have a good cry. Hi, everyone, and welcome. I'm your host, Mary Larson. My name is Blake, and I think I found something on this planet that is more gross than banana pudding ice cream. Do you want to know what it is? What? Burning feces in a barrel in Vietnam. <gasps> that's what that was? Burning feces. Stop. In... I did not know that's what that was. Oh, oh how, did you, how yeah. did you know that was feces? I've seen a lot of Vietnam War movies where I just know this stuff. Oh my I told gosh. you, I am awesome. I know this stuff. I did not know what it was. Oh, that's so disgusting. Oh, yeah. So I think that is... I, no wonder he said follow the smell. Oh, this, <laughs> it gross. is all hitting you right gross. now. There you go. <laughs> there you go. Finally. Uh, <clears throat> listen, I, I know, uh, actually, today should be Mary's And story. you watch that twice. You see it once in the beginning, and then, and then once in the, the end, end. Yeah. just in case you wanted to see all the pee burn. <laughs> all the pee and poop burning, all and all, all the gasoline, and poor little Nikki having to do it all. I know today is supposed to be Mary's story, and I know you're all probably sick of hearing about my mother. Uh, and no, I and stop. I wouldn't blame you if you if you were truly I wouldn't blame you but I had to I had Listen, to come. We're and, talking about a show about adults who are mourning the death of their dad. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> so that's I true. think you're in okay company. I I have a story that I had to commandeer uh, today's story with. Um, Nikki was born on October eighteenth, nineteen forty eight, and my mother was born on October twentieth, nineteen forty eight. And do you remember the name that Nikki was going to have if he was a girl? It was Noreen. And what was my mother's name? Noreen. Crazy. It was just that was just like whoa. Like when all that happened, I was I was kind of blown away. Like I know it's not the same exact birthday, but it's like right there. Mm-hmm. And Noreen and the whole thing, it just my my whole brain just and I was like, "Wow, man! If Mary doesn't have a good story, a good compelling story, Seriously. I am totally taking it over, and uh, we're gonna take it hostage and tell my story." So there you go. That's there another go. story, but again, about my mother. So hey, you know what, Blake? This is this is it. Don't worry about it. From here on out, if you bring up stuff about your mom, you're okay, my love. You're okay. All right, let's get into the show. little bit about the episode details the please. title was vietnam and i think it's all i think it's fairly you know you know obvious why it was entitled vietnam this is Good. us is no mysteries when it comes to <laughs> the calling yes not many um and it, it, it's a very simple easy great 
to the point title uh, directed by Ken Olin, who has directed 40 billion episodes of This Is Us and mm-hmm. should only direct This Is Us. And that is it. I think that should be his only job. And the writers were actually Dan Fogelman and a, gu- a guy by the name of Tim O'Brien. Okay. Tim O'Brien is not a writer. Well, he's not a television writer. Tim O'Brien is actually famous for no uh, for uh, his uh, series of stories called "The Things That They Carried," which was written in 1990. It's a collection of linked short stories, and they're semi autobiographical stories that were inspired by Tim O'Brien's own experiences in the Vietnam War. Mm. Uh, and in 2010, uh, the New York Times actually said about O'Brien's book uh, that it was a Vietnam. Classic. It's actually one of the books. One of the one of the books that I read in uh, college when wow. I studied the Vietnam War, okay. as a matter of fact. So I actually know, I knew who it was, which is actually great. Um, and so yeah, he is actually a Vietnam veteran and went through the whole thing. You should and contact him and see if we can interview him. I think that's a fantastic idea. That's Maybe why I'm here. you know what you know what you, you know what you. you're gonna get. Do you know what you're gonna get? So what am I gonna get? Hey. Hey. That's what you're getting right there. The first outstanding <laughs> of the day. I got you, boo. Um, so yeah, I think I think that's exactly what we're going to do. Uh, so yeah, that's it. That it, the the fact that they actually bring this guy in, who is a famous writer, mm-hmm. to get the right tone and the right details down for this episode, I think is uh, an exemplary uh, attention to detail summary of what. Dan Fogelman, Isaac Aptaker, and Elizabeth Berger are doing on This Is Us. Mm-hmm. Uh, we should all be very thankful that that was that he was brought in to help write this episode. What do you got, my darling, for your lemonade rating? We need to get a sound bite for the lemonade rating. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. My lemonade rating, though, for this episode is a big old five. You know, okay. I'm enjoying these like out of the big three, Pearson. I love me the big three. I talk about it all the time. When I get mm-hmm. them all together, it's fun. But this is like Memphis to me. This is this is outside right. of our normal realm. This is a nice, deep study into. Let's be real. One of the most beloved characters, and um, I, I, I just, think the most beloved character in This Is Us. I would agree. Yeah. I would agree with you on that. There yeah. we go. At least to us, our most, me and you. Oh our no, most, but I, I would. Well, I would say yes to yeah, us, but, but I would say for for the most part, I think everybody's. Everybody ev- thinks Jack Superman. Everybody's on the Jack train. <laughs> So big old five. How about you? I'm giving this one a four nine. And you know what that means, my darling? It's pretty much a five. <laughs> That's what that means. Yay. We got some horse. It's the first horse of the season. Nice. And I really liked this episode. There was one part that kind of brings it down to a four nine for me, but we'll get into it. Regardless, taking the time to tell uh, tell these one off stories about a character who is, like you said, my darling, just unbelievably loved like universally loved in the this is us community um and he is so saintly within the context of this is us when you tell a story like this and get away from all the other stuff that they're trying to accomplish like we've said so far that this is us in season three has tried to just do too much there's too many things happening correct i felt like the train just came to a screeching halt and 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 it just said, we're going to focus on Jack and we're, mm-hmm. we're going to tell this story. And this is us is always at its best when it decides, no, we're going to slow down. Mm-hmm. And when they did the episodes, uh, number one, number two, and number three and Memphis and this big, amazing, beautiful life. Those are always those really special episodes that really dig down and really dig deep into that specific character. And this one was written in a creative way. It was directed perfectly and it actually had something to say other than just like, look, Vietnam, like, oh my God, it's cool, Jack and Vietnam. This this episode wasn't about Vietnam necessarily. It had much more to say than that. So my darling, what do you got for your GBG? All right. My good was Nikki when he put down his glasses to go be Superman in his household when he oh heard his mother God. being beaten he like made sure his glasses were off he took off the Clark Kent so he could be the Superman and I was like oh my gosh because like that's something my little boy would do right now like if I told him if my little boy wore glasses and I said oh this is like your Clark Kent you turn to Superman you take him off he would have literally been like all right I'm going to go do this my, blindly. But he I'm gonna absolutely do it. would have done that. Right? And so I, at that moment, I was like, Nikki's like my son. Like these precious little children who are like, I'm going to do this and I'm going to be brave. 
Oh, that was so freaking awesome. I'm also glad that he didn't get hit. I was a little nervous that he was going to be I hit. I thought it was moment. coming too. Yeah, I was I was nervous. So I'm glad that that didn't happen. Yep. That was part of also the good. My bad. Oh, are you ready for this? Mm-hmm. Everybody ready to cry? Because mm-hmm. you know that beautiful shot of all the babies after Nikki was born. It was kind of like reminiscent of episode one, season one with all the babies in the hospital. Mm-hmm. And they, they showed all those kids' names. Every single one of those boys was drafted and sent to Vietnam for the most part, unless they were in college or had a different reason. Mm-hmm. Every... One of those babies who was a boy that they showed their name, you knew, well, pretend world, of course. They were with Nikki oh, in Vietnam. Brutal. Likely. Right? Brutal. All those little babes. I can't. All right. My great, breathe. Oh, mm-hmm. breathe. The shot, of course, then flashing to Jack with Randall, reminding us that this is where it began. Mm-hmm. This is where Jack learned this wonderful technique of breathe. Yeah. Focus and even, on the even Randall then giving it to William yes, at the end. Yes. It's amazing how something that small can can spread yes. so quickly. You know what I mean? Stopped my heart. How about you? My good was the moment that Jack stands in Nikki's room and sees every single thing around him, whether it's all the books by one HP Lovecraft, uh, Rhode Island's uh, favorite, uh, seeing Superman, which we eventually find out that what that is what he uh, Nikki calls Jack, mm-hmm. to the football that broke his glasses. And this is all right after seeing Nikki's letter, where he's saying that he may already be dead and not even know it. He's taking the pills. He's being demoted. Being able to tell a whole arc in a matter of a minute is amazing writing. We start, we know where Nikki's coming from. Mm -hmm. We know that he's a kid who has this love of science fiction. Did you see the amount of encyclopedias in that kid's room? This is before we heard that he wanted to be a doctor. Right. So I saw those encyclopedias and I was like, yep, you're, you're a kid that loves to learn. Right. Right. That, that is not a rich household that would just be having fun buying encyclopedias for their kids just because. That's probably what he asked for for Christmas one year was Encyclopedia right. Britannica, the entire set. And not only that, I mean, he has a whole bunch of other things. Like I said, he's got a whole bunch oh. of books by H.P. Lovecraft in, kid. In, in his room. It's called The Shuttered Room and Other Stories, The uh, the Dunwich Horror. He also has a book called The Metallic Muse. It's all like this old school sci-fi stuff. He's a there's nerd. Even, there's even a, a, a poster of President Kennedy with... With NASA and spaceships and and then there we have the Superman of course that's sitting right there and in focus with Superman is a book that has a title that says an epic story of glory and shame I don't know what that means well the, the, I haven't heard of that story well I mean. no no but think of the oh, title you're just saying oh Think of the title as it relates to what it's Superman is right in in front of this story, an epic story of glory and shame. It all comes into frame all at once. So when you're using this visual storytelling and you're able to show where Nikki started Mm -hmm. and how far he fell in Vietnam, all in a matter of a minute. Found him. Oh, okay, good. There we go. Sorry, continue. <laughs> Case of when hosts aren't listening. <laughs> Thank you. So when you see how far he's gone, um, it's in, it's that's incredible writing. The bad, and this is what brings it down to a four nine for me, which is when Nikki is saying that he wishes he could just start from the end and go all the way back to the beginning to oh, see I how like his that. life got to where it was. I don't have a problem with the sentiment. In fact, I kind of like the whole philosophical, curious nature of all mm. of it. But it was so on the nose with what the episode was trying to do. Oh, my God. No, I see it as all of this is us. No, what I'm saying is like, it, he's saying, I wish we could just go back yeah. and just start from the end. And that is what the, the whole structure of the episode is doing. It's showing mm-hmm. the end mm-hmm. all the way back to the beginning. And it was like so on the nose. But don't you see like as a whole, This Is Us has kind of done that to us in different ways in season one, like knowing Jack was dead and then yes. trying to figure it all out. I took it as like, whoa, this is, a, but I see what you're saying. It was like. It was just so in your face. Yes. It was like so in your face and it was kind of super corny. Um, but I was which, down with it. Which I, I didn't like. And that's what brought it down to a four nine for me. I know I'm picking some nits. I got it. I get it. But it was a little okay, rough Okay, what for was me. your great? Let's the get great, real. The great. I have a tie, Ooh. actually. First, the bar scene and the tension oh. of the draft call. Yes. Remember what we talked about a couple of episodes ago when we talked about Alfred Hitchcock? And, you know, you take a conversation between two people on a table and it's boring. Yes, But yes. you take that same conversation, you put a bomb in the middle of it that's ticking and they don't know about it. Now you have tension. tension. Right? So, the same thing applies here. We already know that Nikki is heading to Vietnam. We already know that he dies. Yep. We already know that he's going to get called. The tension is about 
how the two brothers react to it and come up with a plan that makes it worth our time. Mm-hmm. Seeing their reaction, seeing that that moment of, oh my God, I can't my right? life, what right? did I do? Okay, and number two, and, and this is the real good one, and you've already mentioned it, my darling, which is the ending. That is the biggest sobering moment for the entire episode. You get a setup, uh, y- like you get a feeling that you've been set up to be feel so bad for Nick and Jack that you forget about everybody else. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, in life, you kind of think of yourself as like the center point of the universe and everything else kind of revolves around you. And that's what we've been given a little bit and what we're kind of used to in This Is Us. We're used to the Pearsons and Mm -hmm. everything else revolves around the Pearsons. And that's okay for us to fall into that trap. And it's easy to get sucked up into it. But just in that town alone, all of those babies... All of them are all going to Vietnam. They're all going to war in 1970. All of them. And that's just in that one little I town. Right? I, it's a surreal moment. Yes. It's an absolutely surreal for, moment. Especially for us who hadn't lived through it. We can only imagine for the listeners who are saying, yes, yes, it was. Right. And we said, that's three. Big three? Big three! So I have to go back here to last week. Rochelle Bustamante. I she goes by Rachel. Oh, okay. Sorry. Rachel Bustamante. Monte. Bustamante. Okay. Bustamante. I say it. <clears throat> um, anyway. She actually, I have to give her uh, a, a a real big uh, applause here. I'm a fan of Rachel. Because she said in the last episode, you mentioned the book ending on the, how, the, how there's book ending on the show on the last episode. So there's another big book end in the previous episode. And when Jack is doing the dishes and cleaning the kitchen and how that was the beginning of Jack and Rebecca, but it was also his <gasps> last, last act before he passed oh. away from the smoke inhalation of the fire. And I just, you know what, I, I have to... I, I Yeah, girl. That was excellent. <laughs> nice. Excellent. Allison Lee Cross Blouse gave it 3.5 lemonades. I liked getting the backstory of Big Brother Jack to Little Brother Nikki, but it felt a little disconnected to other parts of the larger story. It was interesting. However, just to see a few little minutes can make such a huge difference in someone's life. Had Nikki been born... Just a few minutes later, because really, he he only remember this. I'm, I'm side talking for a second. It was just two minutes, guys. Had Nikki been born just a few minutes later, he might not have been drafted. He wouldn't have been drafted, Allison. I looked up the date actually. Um, Allison also says it was also interesting to learn about Jack's heart condition, and I cannot help but wonder if that played a part in his death after the fire. Mm-hmm. I agree. That's yep. of course went through all our minds. I mean, probably someone still would have had a heart attack, but most certainly someone with a weak heart. Heather McManus Gonzalez says this episode was heartbreaking in so many ways, but most of all, it made me realize just how strong that moment was in the last episode when Rebecca asked Jack if he had a dream. He's lived his entire life for everyone mm-hmm. but himself, mm-hmm. taking care of his mom, his brother, his father, even in some ways, his men in Vietnam, etc. Rebecca is the first person to ever ask Jack what he really wanted in life, and he doesn't he didn't hesitate. Just a simple life full of love. Vicky Johnson gave this episode a 4.8 lemonades. I liked that they kept it totally centered on Jack. Her good was the callback sprinkled in, learning the origin of breathe while face holding, and the fact that Toddler Jack loved his little plane when he had a good dad and would one day be love building planes while being a good dad to his own oh. son. Yes. Her bad, which she has renamed sad. Ooh, <laughs> maybe that's what I should <laughs> rename ours. The fact that even as a young boy, Jack had to step in to the protector role for both his brother and his mother. The best was they really captured the time frame of the draft, the heart-wrenching look in the nursery at all those possibly doomed young sons born on that date. I even home- heard my own birthday called out towards the end of the TV Oh lottery. my gosh. One other point, despite his difficulties with his father, Jack cared enough to remove the cigarette from his sleeping hand, perhaps avoiding an earlier tragedy. I'm glad we will continue to be shown the Vietnam storyline like breadcrumbs leading to a destination. And we're going to cheat a little bit here. Uh, Emma DZ also has um, has, a, has a comment here. I know this is the big three, but I'm going to give you a fourth one. She said, uh, Tim O'Brien has a writing credit? The guy that wrote the things they carried? Tim O'Brien? First Terry Gross? Now this? <laughs> Hashtag all the horses. <laughs> Yes, but, you know right. all the snaps for Emma. Oh, I love it. I love it. So, how did you uh, 
So you gave this episode a five, my darling. Yes. What first, what stood out to you about this episode? I mean, uh, first and foremost, wow, they got helicopters. (laughs) All the helicopters. (laughs) I was like, and all the extras, too. Extras for days. For days. This is an expensive shoot. Totally new scenery. This was exactly all expensive shoots. um, Having to do very different filming. I mean, I'm wondering how much of that stuff they just reused from Kevin's film. (laughs) Yeah, sure. I wouldn't be surprised. At least we have these costumes. Um, (laughs) But really, how, how really tried to make it and Jack's demeanor the entire time. You know, really being this um, solid force. And we've been mm-hmm. able to see it even as a child. Like, this is just part of who Jack was. And I really, really enjoyed that. But I thought we could maybe talk about, like, Jack's youth that was portrayed. And then we go up in age. You know, we saw him start okay, with yeah. Nikki. Sure. So just Nikki being born. Um, oh, his, how, his, how his dad told him, you always take care of your brother. Yes. And his dad wasn't drinking at that point. Right. And so if this is the question. What brings his dad to become the the major a hole that he really is, and and how heartbreaking is it to see that Jack's granddad, mm-hmm. uh, Stanley, mm-hmm. Stanley's Stanley's dad, is a drunk and he's a disaster. So I'm either thinking it's health issues with Nikki that leads his dad to drinking. Oh, that's a good one. Or maybe his own dad's death pushes him to drink. Like maybe grief and having daddy issues and never, you know. All that leads leads him to drink. So sure. that's what I'm thinking. I think the real winner here for this episode is, I mean, yes, it has this really cool setting of Vietnam and, you know, that first 20 minutes that was commercial free, by the way, mm-hmm. um, you know, seeing how Jack interacted with his men and being ambushed and being under fire. And actually, I thought of you, my darling, as we were watching this, when you said, I want to see how Jack is able to stay calm when yeah. he's carrying that bed, that that mattress. Well, his hands, and his are, hands on fire. are on yep. fire. They're charring to a crisp. Yes. I want to know how he's able to do that. And here you get a chance to see it. Oh, yeah. And he not, was not just a mechanic. No, no, no. <laughs> no, he's not just a mechanic. And um, but and it was great seeing that. You got a chance mm-hmm. to meet Robinson, who was the guy that Kevin emailed in yes. season th- in episode three. So we're, we're getting a chance to see more of him. And he said that he spent, I don't know why you're talking about Vietnam. You just skipped over the entire Jack youth. Which... Oh, no. Well, I'm, oh. I'm, I'm getting to okay. that. Okay. Okay. I'm getting to that. My brain is trying to catch up. It's okay. <laughs> uh, I, I, and we could talk about more of this later. No, but it's you, fine. you get to see all of that. Go with and, it, it, babe. and it's great. And. I appreciated seeing it because it gives it gives you a whole background on Jack mm-hmm. in the war. But the real winner here is seeing the relationship evolve and devolve between grandfather, f- father, son, brother, and where it all began and how it all mm-hmm. finishes. I mean, having Jack's granddad be a drunk and then seeing his mother later on be like have the black end. eyes yes. and uh, it, uh this episode had much more to say about hey this is cool this is vietnam it was this is about what happens between fathers and sons mm-hmm. and brothers mm-hmm. and the the complexities of these relationships that, that are that are here it's mm-hmm. much more complex than hey you're my big brother yeah you protect me i mean yeah. There's resentment involved with Jack being protective of Nikki this entire time. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I mean that's why he leaves and goes to Canada, or right. doesn't go to Canada, right? Mm-hmm. And 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 not only that. I mean, you have the, this loaded line from from Stanley to Nikki saying, "Make me proud, son. Make me proud." After he gets his number called, and can you imagine always having that? I mean, actually, I can. <laughs> uh, always having this desire to like this push and pull of mm-hmm. like hating your dad mm-hmm. and then loving your dad, wanting nothing to do with your dad, but really deeply down wanting to impress your dad. Um, it's 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 a beautiful writing. It really oh, is. Oh gosh, it truly is. It truly is. It's it's incredible, and it's completely complex because Nikki's desire to stop being Lois Lane, and this is why we we play this at the beginning here, is that is what forces him to leave Jack and go to Vietnam, and even while Nikki is even telling Jack that he is Lois Lane, he, he can't even look at Jack. He won't even look at him at all. Can't even face mm-hmm. him. The one guy who's protected yep. him his entire life, and he decides, I'm skipping out. 
incredible stuff. So much stuff. So much stuff that I seriously need to like delve into and I'm excited that there's more next week because I want to know, like, I can't wait to hear what Robinson has to say because he was leaving in 90 days, Yep. but he'd already spent a great amount of time with Jack leading up to that, yeah, you know, right. in Nam. So they obviously have more stories than just how, what happened to his foot. I mean, they went through a lot of stuff before sure, that. Sure. Um, I, I, I love that little bit though. He's like, just let me have my foot. Can I have mm-hmm. my foot? And then at the end, before right before he leaves, hey man, you want a foot? Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so but- just as a little I did a little fact checking because this of course we were not alive during Vietnam and um, you know you get to see it occasionally depicted on movies and on TV shows so for just reference in World War II the infantry man generally spent about 40 days of combat within four years okay. and the Vietnam uh, person who was, who was on the ground saw about 240 days in just one year and that's because of the mobility of the helicopter. Oh yes, okay that makes sense. Crazy, it, right? It, but, right. The, but the helicopters just like we saw were able to save so many of those patients um, so what we got to see was like a huge part of, of people being able to come home um, severely injured but a lot more people were able to live than would have if it wasn't for um the helicopter right so uh, i just i thought it was just really interesting to like see how many days these people really spent in vietnam right compared to the previous big war and and it well the previous well yeah i mean i guess if you want to make an argument the previous big war was going to be the korean war but you know yeah. it is what it is that's the, the basically the forgotten american war that and the war of 1812 uh or the mexican war that's also another forgotten american war anyway um i think what this what this does here is it not only tells you the story of of jack and and his brother and everything it also has this larger background piece of actually having a social commentary on the war and and, and to me it's it's almost like a little bit of revisionist history mm-hmm. um where i don't, I don't want to say revisionist but it's almost like it's 2020 hindsight history mm-hmm. where it's easy to say yeah well like these people this is their this is their village like this is this is their this is the place. What are we even doing here? Like yeah. when they say, you know, it feels like they, they walk around here like they own the place. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, they kind of do. Yep. Um, and I'm not going to say that that didn't happen, but it's it's just very convenient to mm-hmm. put it in there right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, looking back on it because, yes, they're, they're 100% right. Correct. You know, and even seeing like one of those guys who was playing football, uh, catch with the football with the guy Squirrel. <sighs> Uh, R.I.P. Squirrel. R.I.P. <laughs> and, and how quickly you got a chance to actually relate to Squirrel in Robinson, and I know yep. when Robinson talked about Roberto Clemente, who was a yes. who was a who was a center fielder for the Pirates at the time, which is a Pittsburgh Pirates baseball team, which is where Jack is from, obviously. And uh, even talking about Willie Mays, who was a center fielder for the New York the, the New York Giants at the time, um, you get a chance to actually really care about these guys, but then seeing the other guy who you know threw the football. And become kind of vi- like not violent, but bitter. just bitter, very bitter, and throwing the football into the pond. A beautiful shot. Oh my shot. gosh, that shot was my favorite. That was shot. that was like a pants off moment well, he feels for me. Bad. That was think incredible. About it. Squirrel was going for his football. I'd be upset too. I, I would think I killed Squirrel. Right. <laughs> okay, Squirrel, go long. <laughs> oh, boom! You're dead. <laughs> my fault. My bad. Oops. Yeah, that guy has the right to be bitter and upset. All right. <sighs> let's let's oh, get into hold on oh, i'm sorry go ahead go ahead go oh ahead. i was go gonna ahead. get into the hot takes oh well not yet not yet because i got one more thing to, to talk about oh, the fact that jack has this and this is the beauty of what that th- that uh interaction with robinson was when jack says i'm always pretending mm. i'm always pretending that i'm okay and the converse of that is that Jack is always anxious and he always has anxiety mm-hmm. and how he's able to control, well, not control, but put that anxiety aside. He's able to cover it and we see it then come out in his drinking. Right. Do you think Jack knew that his superior was going to be checking up on him and that's why he got the beer and cigarettes as a little incentive so his troops would be working with him? Absolutely. Okay. Because he said he was going to remember, remember the too. guy said he was going to check up on him every couple of days. 
And I, I thought it was every couple of weeks, but yes. Or whatever, th- whatever yeah. it is. I, I think he said every couple of days. I was like, but, that's either super lucky timing or Jack got wind yeah. and thought, how am I going to make these guys be like happy? Right. With, pretty much like, how do I turn them into the dwarves and have them whistle <laughs> while they work? <laughs> um, yes, uh, absolutely. That was, okay. that was, I think that was absolutely done. Did, did he trade places? Did he wave to his superior? Like did his superior then stay yeah. and babysit? Yeah. Oh it, my God. He probably was like, why you guys have all this beard cigarettes? <laughs> What's going on? Well, that's odd. Yeah. <laughs> no, but, uh, having that, having that emotionality behind it with Jack and always being anxious and knowing that his, 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 not only was his grandfather, but he himself his I mean, his, his own father was an alcoholic and then him himself becoming an alcoholic. The fact that what he did mm-hmm. to overcome that anxiety, overcome being an alcoholic, something that his, his father and his grandfather could not mm-hmm. do. Uh, it adds a great little character bit to Jack when you when you look at it from afar, yeah. and you see all the things that he had to go through in his life, um, and also here too, <clears throat> I have uh, the actual problem that Jack suffered from. I I can't remember how to pronounce it. It's I think it's tachardia, tachardia. Um, tachardia is a common type of heart rhythm disorder, which is an arrhythmia in which the heart beats faster than normal while at rest. It's normal for your heart to rise. This is from the uh, Mayo Clinic, by the way. It's uh, normal for your heart to rise during exercise or physiological response to stress, trauma, or illness, but in tachardia, uh, the heart beats faster than normal in the upper or lower chambers, and your heart rate is controlled by electrical signals, yada, yada. In some cases, tachardia, whatever how you pronounce I'm- it, may cause no symptoms or complications, but left untreated, it can disrupt normal heart function and lead to serious complications, uh-huh. including heart failure, stroke, uh-huh. and sudden cardiac arrest or death. So there is an absolute connection to Jack's anxiety, how uh-huh. his heart races when he's stressed or when he's nervous, and when he actually died with a smoke inhalation and all the anxiety he must have gone through with his family and still managed to stay calm and hold that mattress. Thanks a lot, This Is Us. <laughs> all right, let's get into the hot takes. Well, you have final thoughts. Oh, you don't write those in the show notes. Actually, I do have it written down. Where? I, I do have it. it says, final thoughts in big capital letters. Where? Oops, you're right. There of it co- is. Of course I'm right. <laughs> I wrote it. Okay, I know. <laughs> get to your final thoughts. There you go. Well, do you have a final thought? No. I no. Don't. Okay. I do. I barely ever do. All right. My final thought is the de aging process oh. for Jack and even his dad, Stanley. Yes. Uh, tremendous. Plus lots of bronzing. When he was in his whitey tighties, there's lots of bronzing. Uh, <laughs> um, I was like, your face is a different color than your body because whatever makeup is like the elixir of life mm-hmm. did a good job, but it's not your typical color, <laughs> but it's all good. No, that makeup job that they've done. I mean, we've been impressed with their makeup jobs. Right. The whole time. Uh, yeah. Forever. I, and uh, amazing. Oh, and by the way, another thing too, Jack's grandfather mm-hmm. is played by Michael Ironside. Now, That's a last name. It is. And he is famous for being a uh, jester in Top Gun and also the voice of Silver Snake oh. in Metal Gear Solid, the game. There's a real nerd reference for you. As a matter of fact, I deserve... Nerd! He is the voice of Metal Gear Solid Snake. So just want to say that out okay. there for all you nerds out there. But I love me some Michael Ironside. They've been killing it with the... Oh, the uh, little people the cameos that are right. coming in and Mike, like and even michael angarano the guy who plays nikki i totally believe the fact that he is a he's a guy who is wildly depressed mm-hmm. and he absolutely oh, killed he did it an amazing job absolutely, absolutely amazing absolutely job. killed it in fact and this isn't even going to be his big episode oh it's no no be next i think there's going to be a, yeah yeah and and he was sneaky good in fact i would say sneaky better than Vi- milo ventimiglia that's sneaky, blasphemy. Sneaky better. <laughs> All right. Sneaky better. I'm not saying totally better. You know what? They did a good job as brothers. Uh, yes, they did. On and, the same and team. And I, I really believed them as brothers, and I really believed how much of how much pain Nikki had as a result of his complex relationships. Agreed. All right. You ready for your hot takes? Yes. All right. 
What do you got? Yours first. Oh, we're doing mine first. Okay. Jack is absolutely going to have a little relationship with that woman he kind of encounters in when the, the boy's giving him a fish. Yes, when the boy's giving him a fish, that lady who comes running up and she and everything she and Jack sees or whatever. He absolutely is going to have a little bit of a relationship with this woman. And my hot take is that there is going to be a Pearson half sibling in Vietnam, and that is the reason why Kevin is going over to Vietnam to see his wow. half sibling. You just went to many, many different levels over I, there. I, I'm all, I'm all about the levels. Well, I've got an extra hot take for you. You know what? That what sneaky good. Sneaky good. <laughs> I don't think Jack is going to have a child in Vietnam. Okay. I mean, he might. It, it would make sense. You know, that happened to a lot of people. Sure. Um, he may not even know that, that he has a kid there, by the way. I, I'm willing to go there, too. This woman was wearing the necklace that Jack gave Kevin. Oh, So okay. most certainly, you're, if, you, if you want, go back and pause. She's running. She's wearing that necklace. And of course, Jack gave it to Kevin after he broke his leg and said, this was given to me in Vietnam at like a really low point in my life. Yep. So no matter what, he's going back to that club med. You got th- we got three outstandings in this episode. You know, I did watch this episode with closed captions, and <laughs> I was being interrupted by my sick daughter the whole time. Yes. She was like napping on me, mm-hmm. so I did watch the episode at least three times. <laughs> I loved this episode. <laughs> this I, was so good. I know a lot of people didn't like it. Oh. There, there's a there was there, in, in the This Is Us Two group uh, that we have on Facebook. There were some people out there that were given they were giving out three and a halfs willy nilly. And like well, I, it's I, not I, I get really. it. People, people don't like it. I get it. They you wanna... and I like Nam. Well, not like it, but we like. No, I, I like the more... idea of taking time to slow down and just focus on one character. The show is always at its best when it does that. I like Jack time. And I this like was Jack a time lot too. of Jack time. So. All, all the Jack time. <laughs> Someone also put hashtag all the Charmin in the This Is Us Two group, and I was like, oh my god, it's becoming a thing. All the Charmin. When did boxers become a thing? Because there was a lot of whiteies. There was a lot of tidy whiteies in this episode. When when were boxers like the thing for men? I feel like boxers became a thing. Like around skater boys in the 90s? Yeah, I would say like 90s. That became a thing. When they had to like bust a sag and, and the whitey tighties were too high. And then and then and then <laughs> then came boxer briefs. <laughs> oh my gosh, the hybrid. The hybrid. The hybrid is great. I'm a boxer brief man. Blake TMI. No, that's not TMI. Okay, fine. It's like saying you wear lace panties or a grandma grandma you panties. Come out on social media and say this kind of this stuff. This isn't social media. This is a podcast. Wow. It's different. I don't do that anymore. I'm a boxer brief guy. That's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with it's that. It's a hybrid. It's the best of both worlds. <laughs> <laughs> I get the loose, fun nature okay, of it. Okay, stop, yet, <laughs> stop. All yet, done. Yet the nice support. I'm all done. <laughs> I'm all done. All right. <laughs> On that note, let's close out the show. <laughs> Hybrid. Okay, sorry. <laughs> note ladies and gents if you want to hang out with us classy people some more <laughs> wicked classy guy <laughs> just keep hitting uh the podcast apps up make sure that you are subscribed you know a lot of people find us and they might download an in- uh, episode here or there but please hit that subscribe button it goes a long way and if you have a friend i mean let's be real this is a popular show you go into work you're trying with your girlfriends your your parents your siblings if they watch this is us please let them know about us because podcasts really are learned about via word of mouth another great way that people learn about podcasts is by leaving a written review in your podcast app of choice. We want to give a huge shout out to Kristen Fred, who said Mary and Blake managed to combine intelligence, warmth, personal insight, and humor in this podcast. Don't just don't listen in public unless you're not afraid of having people see you cry. <laughs> well, for now, I'm Mary. My name's Blake, and this is us too. <laughs>